The following video is sponsored by InstantMaddenCoins.com. The only place to get Madden Coins instantly on every console and platform is InstantMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on, guys? Clickwood here, back again with another Madden 17 Ultimate Team video for you. Guys, today we're going to be talking about are the brand new positional hero players that were added to the game, the defensive positional heroes. We're going to talk a little bit about that promo, some of the things that I like about it, some of the things that I dislike about it. I know there's been a lot of hate on the Twitter sphere, uh, a lot of people talking about how they don't like this promo, and I'll be honest with you, I think that their concerns are very, very legitimate. But I think that there's some positivity about this promo, and I'll talk to you guys about it. So I will I will get into that, um, but I am also going to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the things that I really, really dislike about this promo. Um, so the first things first, guys, what I want to do is make sure that, uh, that I pull up the uh, sets for you guys to take a look at here. Now, within these sets, uh, you're going to be able to actually see... All of the positional heroes that they've added into the game. So uh, there is, uh, I guess, one for basically every single position, as you can probably imagine, on defense uh, as you're going through. And a couple of the positions, like cornerback, of course, has two of them. So we expect on offense there's going to be at least two wide receivers. Uh, let's see here. Anything else that there would be multiple of? That's probably it, I guess. Um but uh, then there's also a punter as well, so expect that when the offensive ones come out, there will also be a uh, quarterback or a, a quarterback, a uh, kick returner, and then also probably a potentially a punt returner and a, ki a, a kick returner. I would say possibly. I'm not sure on that. There will definitely be a kicker card as well, uh, in addition to the obvious, you know, quarterback, running back, wide receivers, tight ends, offensive line, and such, and so on and so forth. Um, so obviously, guys, as you go through these, you're going to see some of them are a lot more. Not necessarily expensive, but they require a lot more than the other ones. Like, for example, Cameron Jordan requires 97 total items to complete the set. Now, I don't know exactly where they came up with the numbers for each of these, but you can see some of them have uh, different chemistries than others as well. Uh, like this Jordan Hicks, the Philly chemistry. Like, why? Like, come on, man. Like, you can't, you can't give it just a little bit better stuff? Like... I don't, I don't understand why they still are doing these, uh, these like team chemistries. But uh, anyway, guys, some of these ones, obviously, as you're going through, you're going to see require a ton. There's a Richard Sherman that requires 99. A uh, Jordan Hicks requires 115. Like what? How do we get here? 115 items to complete a set. Like I know this is like something that they've been doing for years, but I just uh, I'm just baffled at how many items it requires to to complete some of these things. So the bell of the ball, I guess, as you could call it, the best card out of the bunch, as most people would think, is this Richard Sherman. Now, the Richard Sherman is going to require again that you have 99 total items. There's 20 elite badges in that bunch. Now, the Elite Badges right now are going for right around 20,000 coins the last time I checked. Might be a little bit more than that. Yeah, just about 20,750 for the cheapest ones. So, you're going to be spending probably between 20 to 22,000 on each of your Elite Badges. So, best case scenario, you're probably getting out spending about 400, 420 or so thousand coins on these badges alone. So you can start to see that this is going to be very, very expensive to complete. So then you actually take a look and you see what's included in these sets. Now, what's included in these sets are some low overall golds. Now, you guys remember in years past, we had low overall golds in positional hero sets. And most of the time, uh, when it originally happened, which I'm, I'm trying to remember, my first year that I played Madden Ultimate Team was Madden 25. I believe that this was still the case in Madden 13. It may have even been in Madden 12 and in years prior to that. But I know in Madden 25 uh, and in Madden 15, we had these low overall golds. And these low overall golds, like the 72 to 74 overall range right in there, some of those cards were ridiculously rare to come across. Like ridiculously rare to come across. And unfortunately, that's the case again. So you take a look at like this Cortland Finnegan, for example, cheapest one on the auction house right now. Cheapest one is 55,500. You need two of those to complete this set. 
So we talked that the elites are already, what, 400 and 420,000 or so just for the elite badges. And then there's random elites in here included as well. Thankfully, most of these are low overall. There is a Josh Norman that's maybe a little bit more expensive. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's not too bad, 20,000 or so. Yeah, so that's really not so bad. Um, but yeah, like most of these are pretty cheap, the elites. The problem is these low overall golds because there are so many of them in some of these sets. Like, uh, let's take a look at the Chris Cook. I think he was one of the more expensive ones that I saw. Cheapest one right now. And these will vary in price. You might be able to find a snipe on some of these, but that one just sold. Well, I guess it actually didn't. No, actually, it looks like it was bid on. So that person got it for 144,000 coins. So if you need two of those, you're basically looking at 300,000 coins just for Chris Cook. Now, that is very, very expensive. I mean, we're seriously talking about hundreds of thousands of coins just to complete just the low overall golds. Thankfully, most of these players are not real expensive to come across, like William Gay, for example. I bet this is probably relatively cheap. Yeah, so you take a look at that. A lot of these are super, super cheap, 900 coins. I mean, you can do those really, really easily, obviously. So it's not like every card in these sets is extremely rare, but it is very, very expensive to complete these sets. The most recent estimate that I saw from Sea Cucumber... Uh, and I talked to him on a Slack chat, Madden Ultimate Team Slack chat. Shout out to you guys. Um, right before I recorded this video, I asked, and he estimated that it's going to cost you somewhere between 1.8 million and probably somewhere around 1.9 million to complete this set at the time of me recording this video, which is, let me take a look here, 4.30 p.m. Central Time. So, 4.30 p.m. Central Time, you're, you're spending 1.8 to 1.9 million to actually complete this set. And that's if you bought every single thing on the page that you need. So let's go in and actually see what Richard Sherman is selling for. Because obviously we know that when we sell something, we're going to lose 10% to the auction house, no matter what. So we have to find Richard Sherman. We have to find him for relatively cheap. Um, so obviously you guys are seeing here, this is your cheapest Positional hero players, obviously the punter, pretty cheap, even though he is the highest overall player, uh, 99 overall. Tony Jefferson, the second highest overall, or uh, second lowest uh, price, I mean, 96 overall, 950,000. Now, as we go down, we're going to start to see some of these ones that are a little bit more expensive. We start to see the cornerbacks, Darius Slay, but the first Richard Sherman that we see is 2.2 million coins. So, we know... If we were to buy this Richard Sherman and then resell it for the same amount, we would lose 10%. Does that make sense? We would lose 10% of what we actually purchased it for. So in this case, we lose 220,000 coins. So that would bring us right around to 2 million or so. So if we actually complete this set, if we actually make the Richard Sherman card by buying every single thing on the auction house right now as it is, and it comes to around 1.8 to 1.9 million like we talked about, you could actually profit about 100,000 coins. And that's if, again, this card sells for 2.2 million. Now, there is also a thought by a lot of people that EA is going to hear the feedback that we've had in the community about this, this uh, promo. And I really haven't made my thoughts too prominent on this because I was at work earlier today. I didn't really get a chance to dive deep into this thing. But I have, a, I have some real problems with the way that they did things. Um, you know, I'll, I'll get into that in just a moment. But basically, uh, there are thoughts from a lot of people that EA is actually going to go ahead and complete uh, or make it easier to complete this set. And the way that they're going to do that potentially is by doing some solo challenges, possibly, possibly having specific sets that will give you an opportunity to get some of those low overall gold cards. So that's always a possibility. Keep that in mind. If they do that, the price on these items should drop pretty substantially, especially the low overall golds. Now, there is also, right now, Game Changer Packs in the game, <laughs> and Game Changer Packs do guarantee you 10 gold or better players, so you have a good chance, well, I shouldn't say a good chance, you have a chance at getting some of those low overall golds. Now, I mentioned this before that I had some issues with the way that they did this, and I, I mentioned before, Madden 25, Madden 15, uh... I think it was just those two, like I said, it might have been going back further than that, that they were doing the low overall gold thing to do the positional heroes, and that, 
it wasn't great, but at least it was consistent, right? We knew from year to year that they were going to be doing this and you were able to actually go in and invest, right? So if uh, if it was, let's say, team of the year time, for example, right? And you decided, I'm just going to pass on the team of the year. I'm going to wait on these positional heroes. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go in and purchase some of these low overall golds while they're on the auction house for cheap before that set comes out where you actually put the low overall golds into the positional hero sets to complete the positional hero sets. So people were doing that, right? They would take those low overall golds, put them, uh, save them up, and then they would either use them, obviously, to put them into their own sets, or they would say, you know, once once the positional hero sets come out, they would be able to actually turn a profit on those cards. In some cases, a pretty substantial profit. And I saw a lot of people over those years making a ton of coins. Problem, Madden 16 comes out. No longer does that exist. If you guys remember last year, I, I believe it was uh, Madden 16. I'm pretty sure it was Madden 16. Uh, they just had wildcard gold players for, I, I think, all of the positional heroes. So, like, you needed an X amount of gold players, basically, at either at the position. I think it was at the position. I'm trying to remember exactly how the set was broken down. But the point is that the, the low overall golds were not worth anything more than any other golds. So, a whole bunch of people that tried to do that, that tried to invest like we saw in previous years, were completely screwed. And so basically what EA did in doing that was they screwed over the investors. Now, we've heard from EA basically in the past, not necessarily in any sort of official capacity, but from representatives, whether it be on Twitter, whether it be in live streams, things like that, they basically hate investors. They hate people that go in and try to predict what's going to happen uh, based on what's happened in the past, and they go in sometimes and they screw you over by doing things like that, by making it so that those low overall golds were irrelevant. And so this year, we had to all assume that there was not going to be low overall golds in these sets. So most of us that got the low overall golds, what did we do with those? We went and we put them into the garbage sets to get, you know, badges or whatnot, or uh, quick sells, or, you know, whatever the hell it was, uh, to do a, an elite upgrade set, or, you know, whatever, right? We put them into sets, basically, is the point here. And they were basically worthless cards to us at that point. So we took a whole crap load of those off of the market because they were worthless. They're not usable on teams, and so basically what ends up happening then is that those cards become extraordinarily rare. And obviously that means that those cards become extremely expensive because of their rarity when sets like this come out. And again, what does that do for EA? It allows them to sell more of these types of packs like you see on your screen, the Game Changer packs. And what do the Game Changer packs go for? Let's take a look. 100,000 coins or 1,000 Madden points. So there you have it. I mean, that's that's basically what it comes down to, in my opinion. It's another money grab by EA. Like, it's just set after set after promo after promo after promo that's just completely for profit for EA. Now, granted, don't get me wrong. I understand. EA is a for profit business. Their job at the end of the day is to make money. And so I don't necessarily have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is this disingenuous way of doing it. I mean, honestly, like there, there are just hardly any times when you can actually take a look at a promo and say, man, EA really went out of their way to make this great for the people that grind, for the people that play this game a lot, for the people that try to build up a good team. It's just over and over and over again that these promos, in my opinion, are just basically there to get coins off of the market, which they did multiple times here. They're doing it by, first of all, uh, they're doing it by saying that like, you know, for example, like I said, the the gold, low overall golds, basically they pulled those off of the market. So that made it so that people had to spend all these coins. And again, anytime that you sell a card, when they, when they sell one of those low overall golds, the Chris Cook or whoever it is, they're taking 10% of that every single time. That's pulling those coins off of the market. And so when they pull those coins off of the market, what ends up happening? The price of everything else goes up. Again, it's unfortunate, but that's just the way that they do things. And what's really unfortunate, in my opinion, is they put out these promos with the set rewards, in this case being a 97 Richard Sherman. And you compare that 97 Richard Sherman, which again... You can create for about 1.8 million coins 
or you can buy it for 2.2 million coins. Compare it to the Football Outsiders, which is going for 200 to 250,000. It's basically a plus one on every single thing all the way down. Plus one, maybe a plus two here or there. That's it. It's, it's barely an upgrade from his existing card. And to me, you're spending 10 times the amount of coins to get that positional hero that you would if you just bought the Football Outsiders, which is going to play basically the same across the board. Or if you want Deion Sanders, 96 overall, better man coverage, better, I believe he has better man and better zone. I could be wrong on that, but uh, definitely a great coverage corner with Deion Sanders. Granted, he doesn't have the run stuffing ability that Richard Sherman does, but still, Deion Sanders, like 400k. This Richard Sherman is like four or five times as expensive as Deion Sanders to create. And that's what you have with these sets. It's again, it's another way to get coins off of the market, to get people spending a ton of coins just to get the new card, even though the new card's really not that substantial of an upgrade from the stuff that's currently out there. So that's my opinion, guys. I want to hear from you. What do you guys think about this promo? Are you pissed? Do you, th do you like the fact that at least I showed you that it's possible to make coins on some of these? That's another thing that I would really recommend that you guys do. When sets like this come out, go in, try and identify the ones that you can do for relatively cheap, and then see what they're selling for on the auction house. Because if they're selling for an amount that you can make a profit on it, I would potentially consider doing that. I really would. It's risky because you do have to spend a lot of coins to actually complete any of these sets, and it takes some time, but if you can turn the profit, it might not be a bad idea. So thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do me a favor and drop a like on it. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel as well if you are new. And I will talk to you guys again soon.